9 versus 40 versus 45. We're going to be talking about the top three self-defense rounds that you hear about all the time debated on the internet on the Ammunition Guides podcast today. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Now, Chris, we usually compare two cartridges to each other, but today we're comparing three, and it's already overrode my little rat-like brain. Yeah, no, Dave, you're absolutely right. We are taking a different look at things today. Instead of doing two, we're going to do three. Now, I know we've done, you know, nine and 40 and nine and 45 before on the podcast, but I thought it might be interesting if we did all three at once to kind of give everybody the big picture. And if you need any of these cartridges, make sure you click down below in the link in the description or the pinned comment. Get yourself some little bit of money off of your next purchase at ammo.com. So make sure you get that free coupon down below. But these three, you hear these different debated all the time on the internet you know it's is nine millimeter better is 40 smith and wesson still viable you know is 45 you know too big and too old does it really matter anymore you get all these debates and i figure you know what let's just take them all on at once and see what we can come up with i think it's going to be a great conversation i think you might learn a little bit yeah i mean all three of these incredibly popular for you know home defense and concealed carry i mean the differences are incredibly slight it really does come down to little minute details between the two but obviously there's a lot of history with all of these cartridges of course the 45 went through world war one world war ii korea before being replaced in the 80s by the nine millimeter of course the nine millimeter is no newcomer either i think it's the oldest handgun cartridge still use today the nine millimeter i feel really combines a lot of things that are really nice that you want in your cartridge and the 40 just kind of falls in the middle it's one of those jack of all trades master of none but you know i'll say that the 40 has its place uh even though in my opinion it's a little bit over pressurized for my liking it's an interesting compromise between the 45 and the nine millimeter of course the 40 sw itself was developed from a much more powerful cartridge of course the the mighty 10 millimeter is uh, the host to several cartridges but of the most famous definitely being the 40 smith and wesson basically just a chopped down 10 millimeter which you know some people refer to the 40 as the 10 millimeter light or uh the, they take the s and w and change it to you know 40 short and weak which i would not uh, classify the 40 as sh- neither short nor weak uh, this round will get the job done. A lot of people consider it too peppery even for, for their everyday carry purposes. You mentioned everyday carry there, and I think that opens a whole other dimension to this conversation because when you're shooting at the range, it's easy, right? You Maybe you're carrying a larger handgun, you're taking your Glock 17, your Smith & Wesson M&P out to the range, and you're like, oh, this, this 40 Smith & Wesson doesn't have too much recoil to it. But you put that into a subcompact, a really small, tight handgun, that recoil and muzzle snap really amplifies quite quite a bit when you reduce your firearm weight. And my only critique on the 40 is the recoil. It's that snappiness, that almost painful recoil when you get to a smaller handgun that really just kind of sends the 40 packing uh, in my mind. These cartridges, bullets, they're pretty evenly spaced out. Um, of course, the nine millimeter is a 0.355 inch diameter bullet. The 40 SNW is a true 40 caliber. Yep. And the 45 ACP is a 0.45 diameter bullet. So you're really talking about differences of uh, not a half inch, but power even lower than that. Yeah, five hundredths of an inch, uh, basically, is yeah. what we're talking about between these. Sounds things. trivial, but it, it has does. a huge impact on bullet size. It really does, and you wouldn't think about it when you say it in those small terms, like, oh, it's just five hundredths of an inch. That's, that's not that much. Uh, but when you look at it, when you have these bullets stacked up next to each other, you can tell the difference in size and width between these two. And the, the forty-five is just a big bullet, and it's going to leave a big hole, and there's something to be said for that. Yeah. No, the 45 bullet is usually available in 185 or 230 grains, the original loading being 230 grains, yep. and that's over half an ounce, mm-hmm. which is, is more than uh, most rifle bullets even get to. Oh yeah, that's a big chunk of lead. Uh, to, to give you a comparison, your typical uh, 308 caliber is going to be 147 grains, so there, there's a lot of weight. Uh, behind that and there's a lot of power behind it and I think that's why it has just kept going. <laughs> uh, now the nine millimeter of course is the smallest bullet and that's uh, usually available at 115, 124 
or 147 grains. So you can kind of reasonably treat the 9mm bullet like half the weight of a 45 ACP if you're going with a lightweight 115 grain load. Definitely. That is one thing that some people don't think about so much is the bullet weight that comes with it. It's like, ah, oh, it's a 9 mil, it's good enough. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really, that bullet weight, when you're talking about kinetic energy delivered to the target, really does add a lot to it. And I think that's one of the reasons for the widespread success and love of the 45 is just that oomph that it puts on it. To be sure, a very small 45 ACP is going to hit you with pretty hefty recoil too, but a, but a full-size 1911 loaded with, with standard 230 grain bullets and an 825 FPS muzzle velocity, pretty comfortable compared to those smaller 40s. Let's go back to bullet diameters, because yeah, yeah. I think it's a very important and overlooked part to uh, terminal ballistics. If you take terminal expansion out of the equation completely, the 45 ACP is going to gouge the widest wound channel into its target, just simply by, by virtue of the fact that it's 0.45 inches in diameter. And then you move down to the 40, 0.4 inch diameter wound channel, yep. and then 9 millimeter, 0.355. Now these bullets all have you know potential for very, very dramatic up to double diameter expansion depending on the manufacturer that created the bullet. Oh yeah. But still, still you're looking at a narrower wound channel as you move down in bullet diameter. Definitely. And that's something that you as a shooter need to think about, you know, what your accuracy levels are. Now, I know a lot of people come to me and say, I'm Chris, I'm just more accurate with a nine millimeter. And I think a lot of that comes down to recoil uh, and just comfort shooting it. But the truth is that 45 is going to leave a bigger hole. It's going to have a bigger diameter. One thing, you know, talking about why uh, you know, certain rounds maybe been more effective for the military is because they're bigger. I mean, I feel like yeah. the 45 with that bigger, you know, 0.45 inch wound channel going to be a bit better than, you know, taking that tenth of an inch off and going back down to the nine millimeter. But uh, I think this, this brings up a good point because sometimes you hear stories on the internet from, you know, maybe former military, uh, you know, personnel, I should say, that will say like, oh, the nine millimeter is underpowered and it's not good enough. And we gotta remember that they're talking about full metal jacket bullets. And when you throw that hollow point in the mix, it really changes things up. And I think that's one of the things a nine millimeter has going for it is how much work they have put into these JHPs for these nine mils. Nobody's gonna debate the terminal performance of the 40 Smith & Wesson. It is a very potent round. It will get in there and it will get the job done. The nine millimeter is gonna do the same thing it all comes down in my mind at least to shot placement and that is the most important thing in any self-defense situation is where you're putting those rounds at that said the average number of shots from a, a nine millimeter to neutralize a threat is just a little bit higher and i'm, I'm like talking a fraction than 40 s and w yeah, it's true. You have a higher percentage chance of hitting something that will incapacitate your threat. Now, it may only be, you know, five hundredths of an inch, but sometimes that can be the difference. Yeah. Another reason the 40 s and is favored by, by some, I've heard law enforcement agencies talk about the difficulties of neutralizing highly intoxicated threats, which uh, regrettably yeah. there's more and more of these days. Yeah. And a lot of cops who I wouldn't argue with say the 40 s and is much better at neutralizing a threat that's high as a kite on meth. Definitely. So let's let's wrap it up here. What are your final thoughts on each of these three in those two categories? Well, Chris, I'll tell you, I'd always rather use the same handgun for, for everyday carry as I would home defense, just because I want to train the most with my everyday carry firearm. And I want that experience to carry over into the home defense situation. That said, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm going for the 12 gauge when it's home defense. There we go. I would always favor the nine millimeter over the 40 S and W, but that's just because I, I just happen to have trained more with the nine millimeter than the 40 S and W. I'm not experienced as much with, but I do respect its greater power over the nine millimeters, even though I'm cautious about it, it's, it's higher recoil, which I really do take into account. The 45 ACP for everything you can say about the cartridge itself. And, and I know other other models, other 45 ACP handguns are available, but you just can't really beat that feeling you get carrying the same handgun that your great grand grandfather did during World War One, assuming he was an officer. I guess I didn't answer your question at all. That's They're all, all right. Good. 
I'm going to do the ultimate weasel answer and say it all depends on your personal preference. Fair enough. Fair enough, Dave, taking the easy way out. So uh, I'm actually going to give you my opinion and I'll explain why. So for, for home defense, I'm going to go with the 45. Uh, that's going to be my choice. Uh, the main reason being because uh, naturally, especially the 230 grain loads are typically subsonic, might have a little bit less over penetration potential than you would with say like a 40 or a nine millimeter. That to me is the, the sweeter spot in my opinion, more likely that it will stay inside the target. So that's my pick for home defense. For concealed carry, yeah, I'm going with the nine millimeter. I definitely like the nine millimeter for the enhanced magazine capacity uh, and its ease of shooting in a subcompact. That nine millimeter recoil is a lot easier to control, get those faster follow-up shots and the higher magazine capacity so that you, know, you have those extra bullets uh, in case the fight goes longer than one or two shots. And you know, I'm gonna say something that's gonna throw a fork into the gears, but- uh... All right. Even though overpressure variants of 40 SW and 45 ACP do exist, they're rare. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you feel like the 9mm is unperforming, you can go to the plus P cartridge. Oh, yeah. Get a little boost to your muzzle velocity and a noticeable boost to recoil as well. But you're going to get that flatter trajectory that terminates in greater kinetic energy delivery to the target. So. No, no, yeah, that's a really good point. We didn't touch on the plus P variants of uh, of nine millimeter, but yeah, nine millimeter plus P, those one hundred twenty four grains, that's nothing to mess with at all. And if you need any of those spectacular rounds, make sure you get them at ammo.com. Make sure you click that link down below. Also, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. Help us grow the channel, and we will catch you on the next one. <laughs>